Hey everybody, Rob here. It's time for a couple of new Pro Revenge stories. First one, half the class fails the midterm after cheaters copy me. Let's jump right in. Please hit that subscribe button for more Reddit Revenge stories. I don't have a problem helping classmates. I really don't. I even tutored several classmates during my final semester of undergrad because they needed the help. They all ended up passing their classes with my assistance. This story comes from a particularly tough business information systems class during my undergraduate education. The students in this class were mostly non-technical business majors, so this new material wasn't at all similar to anything we'd learned in other classes. Needless to say, most of the students were struggling, including me. I still had a 4.0 in college at this point, though I finished with a 3.99, and I was willing to put in max effort to keep my stellar GPA. I started studying hard. I made my own Quizlet sets. I read the book every night. I finished assignments a week early, and I did outside research. After grinding it out in this class for about a month, I was working on an assignment in a room designated for quiet homework time, and that's where our story begins. Several other students from my class were there and working on the same assignment I was on. Judging by the size of exasperation, the irritated whispers, and requests for help, they weren't having much success. Having studied relentlessly for a month, I was having an easier time of it. As I got up to go get some water from the fountain in the hall, a classmate asked for my help. I told him I could do that and I'd be right back. I returned a few minutes later to find what I can only describe as a bunch of busy bees happily working away. This was strange, since they were hopelessly stuck two minutes before, but whatever. My classmate tells me he figured it out without me. Now, I'm not an idiot, so I know the five people in this room probably copied my work off my computer when I went to get water. Scumbag move number one. But as it turns out, no one in the class needed help the next day or the day after. Whoever in the study room had stolen my work had forwarded it to most of the class. Scumbag move number two. I don't mind being helpful, but I hate being used. So I made a plan to get back at the people who had stolen my work. It didn't take long to organize my plan and carry it out. Here's how it went. 1. I changed an answer on the next assignment by multiplying by negative 1. $1,500 became negative $1,500 on this question. 2. The next week, I left my computer in the same place as before and went to get water, just like I had done the week before. 75% of the people in my class of 40 people put negative $1,500 as the answer to question 3, which was definitely incorrect. 3. I began studying relentlessly for the midterm our professor had said he wouldn't adjust the weight of the test, something like your score out of 50 on a test with 60 points available, so your score of 40 becomes an 80% instead of 67%. If anyone scored particularly well, this class was difficult and no one was expecting to score over 75%, so all of my classmates figured the weight of the test would be adjusted. My plan was to wreck the curve even though it's not a curve, and deny everyone the adjusted weight by producing a sufficiently high score. I recruited a classmate who hadn't stolen my work to study with. Together, we aimed to score high enough that our professor couldn't adjust the weight of the midterm. Here's how it all played out. No one who copied me realized the answer was incorrect. Every last one of those idiots submitted the wrong answer to question 3. This next part surprised me, but my classmates began insisting the class was unfair, too difficult, or rigged, and launched these complaints at our professor. One day after the class, I had the following exchange since I was the last student out of the classroom. OP, do you think this class is too hard? Honestly, this class is hard, but if people spent as much time studying as they did complaining, they'd be fine. They really need to just get to work. I thought the same. Deciding spur of the moment my next move, I also happened to know that most of the class incorrectly copied my work on the last assignment. Question 3 should be a net income of $1,500, 
not a net loss of $1,500. I put down the wrong answer initially, everyone copied me, and then I changed the answer later. I think you can reasonably conclude that anyone with negative $1,500 as the answer cheated off my incorrect work. I figured they all copied, but I didn't know you were the source. Anyway, thanks for your candor and your dedication to the class. I didn't cheat, so I don't know what happened to those who did, but depending on the class, they would either get a zero for the assignment or a plagiarism citation, so they got one of those. Fast forward to test day and I'm ready to go. I know since most of the students are business majors, they need 70% to pass the class because it's a required course. Hurting them on the midterm will go a long way in helping drop their grades. I take the test. I'm the first one done, and I leave pretty sure I've done enough to deny the class the exam weight adjustment. A week later, we get our exams back. Tests are distributed all around me with scores in the top in red ink. 68, 71, 70, 66, 75, 67, and these are the smart students. Someone on the end of my row takes a test from our professor and lets out a sigh as he begins passing a test down my row. It stops on my desk. 93%. I've won. Some idiot in the front of the class. So is there going to be a curve? Nope. What was the high score? 93%. Average score for the exam was 71. So a good number of people didn't get a passing score. Maybe they made up for it on the final and passed, but I don't care. I got mine. I have to echo one of the comments down below this story because it sums things up pretty well. It says, I like the revenge being, I studied hard and did really well on the test and that screwed them over. As they say, the best revenge is living well. On to our next story. The bosses should have just paid me an extra $1.50 an hour. Let's jump right in. After high school, I started to work at a coffee shop whilst I started my studies at university. The owners of the coffee shop were a cool couple in their 30s. The shop was cool with awesome deep house music, awesome customers, and the vibe was awesome. Getting underpaid wasn't a big concern of mine. I also wasn't paid penalty rates for working weekends or public holidays compulsory in Australia. At first, working for them was awesome. I met some amazing friends, who I'm still friends with now, and let some good skills which I'll use the rest of my life. As I was studying and living out of home, I did have an increase in bills, so my hours stepped up. I went from 20 hours a week to about 40 hours a week on top of full-time university study. As the uni work piled up, I needed to take some time off for practical classes assessments, and own self-care. This caused some tension between me and the bosses, as it was only a small coffee shop, and now, as my job role had increased to opening and closing of the store, banking, stock ordering, and training of staff, I was needed to be there a lot of the time. I'm not one to say no, so I made it work for some months, often causing me to do 13-hour days at work, and then 4 hours of study when I got home. At this time, I was getting tired, stressed, and a bit irritable, and I crunched some numbers and worked out if I earned an extra $1.50 an hour, it would mean that I wouldn't have to come into work for the annoying 5-hour shift I hated and my wage would stay the same. Beautiful. It was around the one-year stage of working there that we had a meeting about pay increase. After a lengthy discussion, it was decided that no, I wouldn't get it due to tax and superannuation expenses from the employer's side. After this talk, there was some serious attitude problems from the two bosses, but these would only last for a couple days. The female of the couple had serious bipolar and would come into work super happy and in a fabulous mood and then turn instantly if I dropped a plate or made the wrong coffee. Her mood would then go back up after two hours. I was walking on eggshells around her and was always dreading her epic mood swings. For the next year, I worked my ass off, both at work and university. I took on extra shifts when needed and helped volunteer at the local homeless shelter in my spare time. Over this year, I met some amazing friends at work and we would often go to house parties or out to dinner 
and we built a really good friendship. The bosses, for some reason, didn't like this. It was coming up to Christmas, the busiest time of year, especially for a coffee shop in the shopping center. We were making the first coffees at 5am and turning the till off at 9pm. We were the backbone for every retail employee in that shopping center. Me and three good friends were ruined after every shift and we decided to sit the bosses down and ask for a pay raise. We were over the moon when they told us they would raise it $1 an hour, but that's as far as the budget could stretch due to being a small business. Over the next year, we all juggled 40 to 50 hour working weeks on top of full-time study, whilst the bosses went on month-long trips to Europe and the USA. They bought a new house, car and boat, and were living the life while we struggled to pay rent on time. One of my friends got a job offer that was too good to turn down, so she left. She would always come in and tell us about how good her new job is and all of her spare time, and we all got instantly jealous. I was desperate to have some spare time and a decent paying job. My grades were also slipping, so I was on the hunt for a new job and ready to get revenge. I asked for character and employment written references so I could start applying for interns that would be coming up in the following year. Absolute BS. I got advice from customers in relation to work, health and safety, and employer's law. I also, in general, built a bloody strong rapport with a number of other employees and customers to ensure that if the ship went down, I had people on my side. The time has come where I got a new job working in an admin role for a law firm. Completely different place than what I'm used to, but I welcomed it with open arms. As I was casual, the bosses didn't want us to sign into a contract so they could evade money for the tax office, etc. I decided what better way to screw them over than to quit unexpectedly on a busy Saturday morning. I made sure that I did this on a day that my three besties couldn't work and wouldn't get dragged through the mud or deal with the bipolar mood of my bosses. About six months have passed working in the office where one of the head solicitors dealt with the employer and employee disputes. I would read emails coming in and out and realized that I'm entitled to be back paid for the loss of income. I teamed together with my three best friends from the shop who had all left the coffee shop and we decided to each write them a letter demanding to be back paid the money we had lost over the years. We each paid for a private delivery company to deliver our letters separately but on the same day to our bosses and giving them 28 business days to reply to a request. This has then caused them to go to a solicitor and spend a ton of money for advice before replying. We got our replies, which stated they were unaware that they were underpaying us and were open to pay us $5,000 each straight up or we could go through our payslips and timesheets and request a different amount, but that would be at our own expense. The three other employees decided to take the $5,000, but I knew I was entitled to a lot more and requested three and a half years of payslips and timesheets. When I received all these documents, it was in the middle of our winter university break. I had no plans or holidays booked, so I decided to sink my teeth in. I went through four years of salary entitlements for retail and hospitality workers and through all the pay slips to work out how much I was owed. About two weeks later, I had figured just shy of $30,000. I typed up a nice letter and photocopied 250 pages of my pay slips and workings out and sent them to my old bosses, this time with a return date of seven business days, otherwise legal proceedings would commence. I was calling their bluff. I had no money to buy a Coke, let alone a solicitor. Seven days had passed when I received a letter outlining that they will require a further seven days and have compensated me $500 for the late turnaround. Beautiful. It is in this seven days while scrolling on Instagram that I saw one of my old customers from the coffee shop was now attending this new and cool coffee shop that had opened up in my area. I decided to go in and get a coffee when I realized that this new coffee shop was now also owned by my old bosses. As I ran out of the store, I bumped into another customer who told me that my old bosses had purchased the store just as I was leaving and had since also purchased a nearby coffee shop with intentions to make it into a bar. Interesting. 
after some months of back and forth negotiations, it was decided that the final figure they would pay me would be $28,500 plus superannuation, approximately $4,000. I agreed that as they were a small business, I would receive these payments in a weekly installment of around $650 for 42 weeks. Fantastic. Shortly after the payments began rolling in, word started to get out to other ex-coworkers and current employees of their three businesses, and therefore, the letters started to roll in. Apparently, they had been underpaying staff over all three businesses for a number of years, and therefore had received a ton of letters. Due to the influx of money owing letters, they ended up having to sell all three businesses, their beloved BMW, their boat, and downsize their house. Shame, they now both work in a local nursery, delivering plants to customers, whilst I travel the world. Shame. Well, I learned something reading through the comments of this, apparently in Australia, they get paid about time and a half for working on Saturday, and Sunday straight double time, that's pretty crazy, that's definitely not the same thing over here. You'll get time and a half on a holiday, but that's about it. Hmm, maybe time to move to Australia? But I don't know if I could deal with how many poisonous things are down there. I want to thank both OPs for posting their stories to the Pro Revenge subreddit. You can visit them at the links in the description below. Please go there and give them an upvote. Once again, this is Rob from Karma Comment Chameleon saying thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and share it with your friends. And we'll see you in the next one.